Seven, and then you go to God in prayer. Sixty-seven. <clears throat> Oh, true love. 
Christian, it is to represent the personality of our Lord Jesus Christ through our life journey. If you are not like Jesus Christ, so which means you miss, you miss the goal. You miss the aim of your journey on this earth. So let us go approach God through the prayer to present Him our offerings. Our Lord and our Savior. It is true, it is a privilege, Lord, to be called the children of God. Because it is written in your holy words, as to those who obey, to those who receive you, who accepted you, you have granted them the privilege to become the son, the children of God or the Son of God. God, that is why we are here tonight saying we are your children and you want to just to rejoice and to enjoy the privilege of being in your house when the revelation did touch your servant david he said i'm in i'm rejoicing when they are I'm, 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 uh, I'm, i have been told to get to the house of the lord lord it is this thing we want to feel in our hearts like sitting, we're sitting in our house and feeling just like people abandoned when cannot go to the house of the Lord. Like people starving, not having food, not having water to drink when we don't have access to go to worship the Lord. Put in us that emergency, Lord. Put in us this 
first Lord to be serving you to be to be willing to stand in your presence Lord every day with awe with love with recognition but without God we are completely lost so bless each one of us this evening Lord bless the one who are present tonight Everyone who are missing in our midst today because for different reasons, Lord, we are just committing them unto your hand, Lord, so that you may bless them. We, Lord, remember to most of people who may be having different suffering reasons, Lord. Lord, I will, you know who I'm thinking about now, Lord, I cannot mention the name, but I'm praying that, Lord, you may help and give you peace. Give you the rest, of the rest to the weary, to the loneless, to the people, Lord, who do not have peace in their mind in this evening, who are laying in the hospital beds, all different kinds of troubles, Lord, who just remember them, Lord, and asking you to bless them. Lord, start with us tonight and speak to each heart, Lord. Give us the privilege to recognize that when you are hearing this word, well, the wonderful word of the Lord, it is really coming from you. Not the words of men, not the preaching from a man, but the word Lord speaking to us through man's lips. Bless us, Lord, and grant us all our requests in our midst tonight. Let all kind of sin in our midst, Lord, be dismissed, be, Lord, wiped away. So that when we stand in you in front of you, Lord, we may have this assurance, Lord, that whatever we may ask will be granted to us. Be with us, Lord. Come and, uh, and, uh, and uh, have this meeting together with us as we have prayed. So in the wonderful name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. We are going to sing again two, <clears throat> three hymns. Um, and then we can... Uh, you know, I don't know this hymn properly, but uh, they were, uh, the, the room at the cross, I know Grace Mary is not here. You know it? The room at the cross. Okay, uh, we are going to try to sing it. Number 86. Eighty-six. I don't know it personally, that's something. Or is it of June? No. Okay, my teacher going to be leading. Jesus is a shelter in which we can hide. And His grace so free is sufficient for me. Deep it is fountain as wild as the sea. There is at the cross for you. Amen. Yes, there's room at the cross for you. Oh 
you don't know all of them, Sometimes some have some strong messages. Um, is, do you know the message of his coming? The message of your note, don't know. Okay, let's sing just one we know. So we'll uh, <coughs> one three one. One three one. Try to start it again. Yes, it's like with uh, with uh, Gomez. Oh, what you mean the Gomez? What, what do you do? What do you do? Yes. Both they are far from me. See, I can't even go to that. See, sometimes I forget myself. Okay, let's start from the beginning. Both they are far from me. Save your today. Risking your soul for the big baby
feel, uh, feel uh, happy to be called to sit in the house of the Lord tonight. As the time is uh, gone already, we are going to go straight away to the word of the Lord to see what the Lord has prepared for us today in his wonderful word, uh, word Bible words. We are going to stand up, please, and take open our Bibles in the book of Revelation, chapter 14, verse 6 to verse 7. Revelation 14, 6 to 7, please. Then I saw another angel flying in the mid heaven with an eternal gospel to preach to the inhabitant of the earth, to every nation and tribe and language and people. And he said with a loud voice, Fear God and give him glory because the hour of, the hour of his judgment has come. Worship him who created the heaven and the earth, the sea and the springs of water. Amen. Fear God, worship the one who is in heaven. We don't have to fear the, uh, the people from the earth, but the one we have to fear is the God who is in heaven. May I take again Another scripture before we can move forward, it is in Ecclesiastes 12, verse 15. Ecclesiastes 12, 15. Um, We don't have 15 that got me in my head. No, 14 years. Um, okay, we are going to start in, in the head is 13. 13. When all has been heard, the end of the matter is fear God. Uh, fear God and keep his commandment, for this applies to every person. So in, uh, is it my English the same? Oh, 13, yeah. 13, yeah. Uh, yes. It is fear God, that Ma is the one, everybody, I'm going to read it again. 13. So let us see the conclusion of the whole matter. As it is written here. Fear God and keep his commandment, for this is the whole duty of men. Or as it is written here. Uh, for this applies to every person. Maybe go to God now and pray again. Our Heavenly Father, we are so grateful to you again tonight, Lord, for reading these wonderful words which are written in your holy book. Lord, we know that everybody can read, at least the one who got some uh, education who had been trained to read, Lord, they can read. But the correct understanding comes from you. You are the one giving you revelation. We know in you, you know your time, Lord, the people in the, in the, at the temple, the high priest, the, 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 the preachers of the day, the Pharisees, all of them, Lord, they could read those things that they were unable to understand them. But when the Holy Ghost had come, Peter could stand there and then explain those things according to the revelation of the Almighty. 
So Lord, come in our midst again tonight, Lord. Help us to understand your scriptures, not only to understand, but to live upon what is being written. Bless each one of us here, Lord, and bless the one who is listening online, the one who will be listening to this preaching in the future, Lord. Grant them the privilege to understand and to turn their life, to turn their faces to you and to give it back to the sin and to the worldly uh, lifestyle. We commit everything in your hand, Lord, as we have praise in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. You may be seated. We will go today again or tonight in some deep teachings. According to the topic we have, it was the fear not, and then we move to the fear of the Lord. We see when this angel in Revelation 14 is flying in the skies in heaven with this eternal gospel, just let's move to way to say it. When Brother Frank is explaining it, he said that it is the ministry God gave him. He didn't go on a horses, in a car, or in a, any kind of way, any, any other way of uh, traveling. But he said he was flying with, a, with the aircraft from city to city, from country to country, with this message of the last time to preach, to tell the people that the midnight phrase, uh, we are now at the end of the the dispensation of the time of grace for the nations and we have to come back to the original word of the Lord. It is so important, not only we are sitting here sometimes saying, okay, we will believe now this end time message. But it is not that we want to hear. I don't know if you did pay attention, okay. On Sunday, we pay attention to the message of Pentecost, but it is not on Sunday, it was on Saturday. You know, those messages, sometimes we listen to them, though we forget things and we have to come back. We have to listen, ask the Bible, to read it and to read over until God gives you the understanding. And in the message of last Sunday, Saturday, sorry, it was a perfect faith. But what I'm saying, through in this message, that the faith, going from Hebrews 11, verse 1, is the substance of the things hopes for and the evidence of the things, uh, let me read it properly to say it properly, because sometimes I can, Hebrews, Hebrews 11, verse 1. I'm taking it here from uh, this, uh, I'm going to try to go slowly. Now faith is the assurance, it is the same assurance, of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. Uh, not seen. When I, I was reading in, uh, you know, sometimes the translators are very, very strange. They have sometimes the meaning of things uh, in a correct way, but they are giving some the, the, the translation so sometimes which can just push you aside when you want to listen to them. In the French Bible from a translator called Segon, was his name, it is Or la foi est une ferme assurance. This how he said normally literally how it was written from uh, the original uh, uh, version from Hebrew, I don't know from, from which one. They said that uh, it is, I'm going to read what it's written here. Uh, well, yeah. It is, or la foi possède la réalité des choses qu'on espère. Quand on dit, est une fermation, on possède la réalité. Which means it got the reality of things we are hoping for. And he continues, in demonstration, the second one, he said, 
une, euh, une conviction, une démonstration, une conviction ou une évidence des choses que toi tu ne vois pas. Alors, Brother Balaam is explaining, saying, the faith is not an imagination. If you didn't listen to that message again, I listened to it more than once this week. It is not an imagination. It is something you have. Like, I have my eyes. With my eyes, I can say that there's a stand there. There's a trip, trip board stand, which is holding the camera. You can say, no, but that's not true. But I can tell you, without doubt that I can see a stand here in front of me. You can tell me to, you can try to, to persuade me that I'm, I'm mistaken. But my, my sight is giving me the evidence that this thing exists. The same way as my sight can tell me that there's a light above me now. He said, it is, it's, saying, it is the same thing for the faith. Or you have it or you don't have it. And the Christian must have faith. He said, it is, the, it is as natural as when you are eating some, you are tasting food, you can tell you from your mouth that mm, this thing is sweet or sour. How can you say it is sour? Because my, 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 my testing sense tells me that it is sour or it is sweet or too salty. You can say no, it is not true, but from what the testimony of my test, it is saying that this thing is too, too sour or too, too, too sweet. It is the faith is the same thing. If you have faith, you have, you call it somewhat, it is the sixth sense. It is something you, you must have, and to have this, you are getting it through the hearing of the word of the Lord. It is the Lord giving it to you. In such a way that you must believe it. You must, you must see now when the people, when see, you, you go to the hospital, the doctor tell you, oh, you know, you still have only one week or two days to live. If you have faith, faith can show you beyond. It is the reality of things you don't see. It's the only thing you're going to live. It is what the prophet is saying. Someone came and said, oh, uh, uh, like uh, the, the, the king uh, Ezekiel. Oh, the God told him you're going to die. And the prophet came back and said, The Lord is adding more years to you. It is for him to be. It was the faith is going to him. You won't die. Because God had heard you, your prayer. And when you have it, it is exactly the same thing like when you are hearing me now. You are hearing my voice. You can't say that you can't hear it. If you can't hear so which means you, 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 you are deaf. But when you have faith, faith telling you, it is there. The exactly the same thing as our five senses uh, are giving us, uh, get, 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 um, helping us to get uh, in contact with this world and to see, to touch, to hear, to smell, all those things are the evidence that we are alive. And the faith is connecting you to God in that kind of, in the spiritual world. And it is helping us now to have this relation of God because the Bible is saying without faith you cannot please God. And it is not your faith or your imagination. It is the faith God is talking about. The perfect faith. Oh, it is such a, such a. And so the question which is here now, beloved, it is we must fear God. We saw that uh, in the last message, if you can remember, I'm asking you not to listen only once, but to listen even more than once and to pray for God to reveal what we are. He's helping us to go through. Fearing God, God is uh, the author of his words, the Bible here. And the child, let's read, uh, uh, oh, we did read it last, uh, last week, I'm going to read it again in First Peter. And then I come back to, to something. First Peter. <clears throat> okay, first Peter chapter one from verse one. Peter, I'm trying to see which verse I did read.
No, 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 to verse 13, yes, verse 13. First Peter, verse 13. Chapter 1, verse 13. <clears throat> it is said so. So prepare your minds for action. Be completely sober. Fix your hope completely on the grace that is coming to you when Jesus Christ is revealed. As obedient children, do not be conformed to the evil desire which govern you in your ignorance. Uh, ignorance. Let me read it because sometimes it is, I'm, I'm uh, trying to step over the comments which are good here. Let me read it here. Wherefore, get up the loins of your mind. Be sober and hope, uh, and hope to the end for the grace that is to be brought unto you at the revelation of Jesus Christ. As obedient children, not fashioning yourself according to the form and lust in your ignorance, but as he which had called you is holy, so be ye holy in all manners of conversation. <laughs> because it is written, be ye holy, for I am holy. And if ye call on the, ye call on the Father, who without respect of person, judge according to every man's work, pass the time of you sojourning here in fear. Yeah. So the Lord is telling us now, <clears throat> That is something we have to do. We are pilgrim. We are, we are travelers on this world. And sometimes we do not understand it. Israel was a stranger in Egypt. They had a promise given to them to travel from the country of bondage to a land of promise where we are going to be free. The same way we, we are children of God, sent down here for a purpose. That is why, which, what, that is the reason why we are caused to come to become Christian, believers. Every child of God can ask him. He could enjoy rejoicing with a friend in this world. But there, came, there, there had come a certain time in, in their lives when things of the world start to fade away. When there were no pleasure on what they were doing. When something was just moving in them, we could not understand why. And things we went to seek for the church where we could start praying. Because for me, when someone is coming to try to preach you, if there's not something in you already calling for that God, you won't listen to it. Because something already God started a work inside of you. You are like this, this minister from the Queen of Ethiopia. When before Philip came, he was seeking to, he wanted to understand what was written in the Holy Book. That is why the Lord sent his messenger to him, explain him. Before someone ever speak to us, telling us that you know we have to believe Jesus Christ is the Lord. Something in our heart was seeking for the love of God. Some need was, was just moving in our heart. Said, what should I do? I don't feel no more comfortable with what I'm doing. That is what, that is when the prophet is saying, it is not the man who search for God. It is God who was searching for man. It is God who came after Adam. Where are you? The same way happened in the life of the all true believers. God spoke to you. 
Start speaking to you before a minister say in the church or on the street or wherever spoke to you. It was God. So he prepared the field. He prepared the ground. So when nothing one came, you were you were uh, come on, say, you were willing to accept. Say, okay, can you take me to the church? I want to listen more about what you are saying. Because God was working already inside. But I say you now. If I go to verse 17 here, they're saying that, and, and if you, uh, let me take just, uh, okay. If you call on the Father who without respect of persons judged according to every man's work, past the time of sojourning here in fear. So which means, sojourning here if you get, uh, again in, in different books, it is the time of a pilgrim. Pilgrim, uh, 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 oh, oh, pilgrim time, spend it in fear of the Lord. That is why the angel was flying the sky saying, let every man fear God and obey to his commandment. And so that, that is applied to every human being. Not only to a believer, but to everyone. But Everybody must do it. To understand that God, it is, let's go again, we did read it. I'm just taking what you did. Go through already. In Psalm 95, you remember? I'm just going to take some verses, not all, so we can move quickly to what I'm going to try to wish tonight. Psalm 95, if you can remember, we did that again. Uh, from verse uh, uh, 6, I think. From verse 6, even, no, let's start from verse 1 and then verse, uh, to verse 7. Let's read all. I'm, I'm going quickly, it's not good. Oh, come, let us sing unto the Lord. Let us make a joyful noise to the rock of our salvation. Do you understand this? It is something God gave to his children. Let us sing unto the Lord. Let us make a joyful noise to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before his presence with thanksgiving and make a joyful noise unto him with songs. Don't ask the sinners to do this. This is for us. The one who recognizes what the Lord has done in our lives. For the Lord is a great God. Not a small one, not a middle one, but he is the God of gods. And the great king above all, all of them. All the gods who, who they, they are existing. And in his hand are the deep places of the earth. The strength of the hills is, is his also. The sea is, is his. And he made it, and his hand formed the dry land. Oh, come, let us worship and bow down. Let us kneel before the Lord our Maker. God made everything. He created the earth, the animals, the plants, everything. And then he put his son to control everything, all his creation. So we must know that God is our maker. We didn't exist by ourselves, not our mind. We didn't come from, from nowhere. No, he's our maker. If I'm down here on earth today, it is for a purpose. And I have to find the purpose to serve my purpose during my time, my lifetime. And when he said, let's continue. For he is our God, and we are the people of his, of his pasture, and the sheep of his hand. I'm going to stop there. We are the people of his pasture. We are like sheep, like, like, like the cattle in the field. We are the people. He is our shepherd. And that is what we have to understand. Now, let's, what time is it? I'm trying to go fast, but it's not good. 
Let's now move to something now. Knowing this, remember we did read again when Moses was just reminding to his people what the Lord said. We did read it in Deuteronomy chapter 6. And then we'll take something else now. Deuteronomy chapter 6. From verse 1 to verse 13. I'm going to read verse 1 and verse 2. It said, Now this is the command, the statutes and the judgment, which the Lord your God has commanded me to teach you, so that you might do. Uh, so what you might do. Them in the land which you are crossing over to possess. Now God did give a law, give all the commandments, and that now this is a command, the status and the judgment God gave me to teach you, so that you may part, you may take them, so that you might uh, you might do them in the land which you are proposing over to possess, so that you and your son and your grandson may fear and worship the Lord your God, to keep. All his statutes and his commands, which I am commanding you, all the days of your life, so that your days may be prolonged. Now, when God gave his commandment to Israel, it was to make them understand that they were the perfect word of God. And the perfect word of God was to be taught to the children, grandchildren, to the generation to come, so that they may know that. The Lord God, it was more higher than any other word or law that people could have on earth so that they may fear the Lord. They may know how to live in the land God was going to give them. Not do whatever they want to do. It is like when I saw once, uh, I think I did speak once in the church about it. They were saying that uh, Israel, in Israel was the first country where homosexuality was written. I was so shocked. And once I saw uh, some uh, gay people manifesting in Jerusalem, I said, how come is it possible? The Holy Land, they were scattered all over because they made a mistake. And they went back and done the same thing again. I was just shocked. And when you get those things, teach them to your children, to your grandchildren, to your grand 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 grandchildren. So they may fear me in the land I want to possess. The same thing for we. We are not here to listen just to listen. But we are here to listen and to practice it and to teach it to our children. To our grandchildren. To leave our legacy that to do what God asks us to do. To know how to speak to our children. To know how to teach them the word of God. To live according so in such a way that they may see, they may understand that we serve the God. Because know some people say, oh, uh, the word of God is so boring. It is boring because they didn't get to the test of it. And sometimes we can just say, oh, my son, my daughter is not coming to church no more. They, not because maybe it is you. The way how you are reacting, how you are living, how you are living, how you are practicing this word, it is not causing them to, to be hungry, to be thirsty of God. We are living epistles of the gospel of Jesus Christ. We have to be careful of what we are doing. That is why we were saying, fear God and practice all his commandments. So now that is something now we already started last week. Let's move to it now. Okay. You remember in Hebrews chapter 12? Hebrews chapter 12. <clears throat> We 
But it starts from verse 18, if you can remember. I did read it, and then I did stop. Because Hebrews 12, yeah. For you have not come to a mountain that cannot be touched. Even um, let me start a bit up because he's continuing with this, but let's start a bit on um, verse 13. Let's start from 13 and then to move to, eight, to, eight, to 18. And make sweat puff for your feet. Lest that which is lamb be turned out of the way. But let it rather be hid. He said, and make sweat puff for your feet. Which means what is bent, this lamb that is written here, will be straightened, will be put fixed in the way that you can walk correctly. Not the big, Robert Joseph was telling me something just now when we were coming to church. And it is true. But you must be careful because in this la in these last days, sorry. If you you um, you backslide from the gospel of Jesus Christ, it will be very hard for you to come back. If you don't follow the, God, the word of God correctly, it is going to be hard because it is said that in the last days, let the one who is getting filthy continue to be filthy, and the one who is sanctified himself be more sanctified. Because we are coming to the place, the crossing of the ways that one is going left and right, go the left. And there won't be no common ground no more. Even you can be criticized in the same church and say, oh, he's becoming so fanatic. No, but there's something on you which is causing over to, to ask themselves what is, what is happening. But the question is, if you are not careful, you will be taken away from the gospel without noticing that you are away. And it will be very difficult. It is what I'm going to read now. Let's continue the, the reading. Say, uh, verse 13, it was, so get you and make smooth, sweat path for your feet. The, the comments in the uh, Amplified Bible is, that are safe and go in the right direction. So that the leg which is lame may not be put out of joint, but rather may be hid. If you follow the right path, even the wood, the language was that's burned or whatever, God is going to heal it to make you walk straight. When you are obeying to the word of the Lord, continue. Continually pursue peace with everyone and the sanctification without which no one will see. In comments, uh, Amplified Bible is saying, no one will ever ever see the Lord. Without sanctification, no one will ever, 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 which means never, see the Lord. We see where we are standing. We are in a, we said that the judgment is starting in the house of the Lord. We have to understand and to walk in this path during the, our, uh, our pilgrim journey with fear. With, uh, with respect for the word, law, uh, the word of the Lord. He's saying here now, see to it that no one falls short of God's grace. If you have a time, I'm looking, I don't want to, to overtake the time. To fall short of God's grace, that no roots of resentment springs up and causes trouble, and by it many be defined. We have to be careful. By the grace of God, let me just say this. God showed me once in a dream 
this thing about this grace. It was a, in a situation of personal uh, situation, I was just wondering to God, Lord, what, what is going on? He came showing me in a kind of, a, of, a, of, a, of a, you call it, um, or oh, I call it Moses, a graph. Yeah. Yeah. And he said, you see, on one side, on what you call it, epsilon in, in, in French, it was you see. And on this side, on the X uh, uh, line, it was called the, uh, uh, the mercy of God. He said, but the connection between your sins and the, uh, the mercy, it is the grace. He said, you see, Tony, you see this line joining the grace and the mercy, see, as, uh, as, uh, as you sins increase, my grace also increase. Oh, my mean mercy, sorry. And he said, now, you see this line, now, it is not, I don't have it here, I could, I could just do it for you. It is just fresh in my mind. That's, you see, you see, there's a line here, this is the grace. You see, some people are walking beyond the grace and the other up, above the grace. Some people are going beyond, or they're just walking below the grace. I said, don't forget, keep your eyes on the grace. Don't forget it. I'm always doing it. Got to remember God. Seven, hey, the same, man. See to, see, uh, see to it that no one falls short of God's grace. You are going to be above what God said, or you are doing it. You are saying below, you don't want to, to take your possession of, of your promises. You are falling short of God's grace. And when the resentment springs, and when it is like that, yes, troubles are start coming. You are going to bring uh, uh, come on, uh, deceptions, you are going to bring uh, filthy things because you are not working on good grace. And see, even no one, you know what it's going to come to, no one is immoral or godless like his soul. You see, Esau was praying the same God as his brother Jacob. Esau has the same pastor, uh, has a preacher, uh, a pastor as his brother Jacob. But Esau didn't have the same revelation as Jacob. Esau didn't have the same God in his heart as Jacob. That is why God said, uh, uh, I rejected Esau and I chose Jacob. Why? He said, I want to read. see that no one is immoral or godless. He didn't have God. That is so. Who sold his own birthright for a single meal? Many today are doing the same. Ministers are preaching just for money. Are doing everything just for, for fame. Are doing things they don't understand. They sold the birthright a long time. They don't know it. They fall short of God's grace. To understand that we don't have no, we don't have no possession in those things. Our possessions are on heart because we have been blessed of all kinds of uh, blessing in the highest place. But people who don't get it, they're just showing short. Now let's continue now to verse until I go to verse 18. For you know that, let, that later on, when he wanted Esau to regain uh, his uh, inheritance of a blessing, he was rejected for he found no opportunity for repentance. For repentance. Uh, I'm reading it, I'm going to read with uh, comments. There was no way to repair what he has done, no chance to recall the choice he had made. Some people will get to the place where it will be impossible to recall, to, to correct, to have a correction of the thing they made, even though he sought for it with bitter tears. 
They did cry. It is like uh, it is like Judas the Iscariot. Judas did cry. He then he went to hang himself, but there was no way for him to repair what he had done. His soul was the same thing. He could not repair it. It was too late. God gave him something for free. You are the firstborn. This is your birthright. Normally today, we could not call the, the people in Israel, the Israelite people, we call them Esau, Esau or Edomite, because Edom is Esau. But he rejected it. And by rejecting it, he was he rejected God. He was godless. He didn't have no God no more. And even when he came after oh God, he did cry. He said, Dad, you, know, you don't have even a little bit remaining for me. He said, I don't have it. You are going to be a servant of your brother. It was no way. There was no way to change it. We have to fear the Lord. Because it is so important not to say, okay, I'm, I'm a Christian. No. Practice the word of God in everything we do. Amen. There's no place where you can say, okay, now I can, I'm a Christian and then I'm not a Christian. No. You are Christian from the toes to the head. Amen. There's no place where there's no Christ. Christ is in everything. I'm at work. I'm a reacting. You know, I got a lesson some one or two weeks ago. Yeah. Normally we are working and then at, um, at um, it's after 7 o'clock we can have your break, 40 minutes to go to eat. But you are free to take a break when you want. So I was working, I said, I, was, I didn't feel very hungry. I said, oh, I'll take it at 8 o'clock. And then uh, at uh, almost 8.30, I don't know, 9 o'clock maybe. And then they came, they, call, they came to call me, they said, Paul, they changed me the floor where I was going to, I said, oh my God. And I did almost finish my work. I said, I was thinking, okay, I finished, so now I could just relax. And then I said, I'm, I was waiting for 10 o'clock, take my break, and I was not going back to work again until 11, I was leaving. And where they sent, uh, they sent me, it was a floor where <clears throat> there was some uh, extra work. And we had to finish it quickly. We were only two of us. To finish it quickly, and I said, but I'm going to do it. And we didn't know how, how much work we're going to have because it was coming from the computer. Do this, do this, do this. And when it's finished, I said, okay, finished, you can go. And you could not leave before. I said, okay, well, I'm going to do it. And when it is my time, I'm, I'm, I'm leaving. It was a lot. So the same with a, a lady. A young lady, just Indian. I did not. She, she she had in her plan to to take her break at ten o'clock. Me, I didn't know. So we're doing this, and then I got, I got my last order. And she came to me. And I said, "Oh, the orders are finished." I said, "What?" And I was the last one. I said, and it was almost time for me. It was almost ten o'clock. Said, "Okay, okay. What I'm going to tell her? I said, me, I'm going to take my break at ten o'clock." So I'm going to pass her this order. She's carrying on me. I'm going to go. And before I said that, she told me, listen, I'm going to help you. So we finish together. And we go down together. She said, sorry. I said, said, listen, I didn't take my break. I said, I didn't take my break too. I'm, with, I'm going to take my break at 10, at 10. And it was almost 10 to 10. I look at her and said, my. If I was, uh, uh, I was going to, if I, um, I didn't know it, I was going to give her a job, I'm not going to let her finish it by herself. But she stayed with me. We done the job, we finished it, we went down together, and we left for our break. I said, but this girl, she gave me, and this lady, she gave me a, a teaching. She act like a Christian. Me, I was going to leave her alone with this job, okay, it was the last, she could do it. But she, she could do what to, but she waited and she took more time, she went late for a break, just to help me. I said, oh my God, sometimes we Christians are talking too much. But those people, some people, even we, I don't know where they're coming from, they, they, they act in a better way than we Christians. I had more respect for her now. I didn't tell her nothing, but I said, she surprised me. Which means, 
Now let's go to what I wanted to take you. Maybe you won't uh, end up again today. Verse 18. Now after that, I say that after he saw telling us how he missing his blessing, he said that for you, now it is you and me. Let's be careful. Uh, pay attention to, to what I'm going to say now. <clears throat> for you have not come. Let me read in the comments in here because I'm not having some kind of problem to, to take over the comment. For you, you have not come, as did the Israelite in the wilderness, to a mountain that cannot be touched, and to a blazing fire, and to gloom and darkness and a raging windstorm. Now it is what we are going to go back to Exodus 19 just now. To try to understand. And to the blast of a trumpet and a sound of words, such that those who heard it begged that nothing more be said to them. Now, we do understand uh, uh, what is happening here. It is when call God called his people. To come to the mountain to hear his voice. We know today we are as if I could hear the voice of God and uh, the audible voice of God. Oh, but when God spoke to those people in, uh, in uh, Exodus 19, the mountain, let's just read it. It's sad that we are just coming sometime. We just have to come back to try to continue. But we are missing some, some the atmosphere, how God is speaking really, but by the grace of God, we see. Uh, <clears throat> Let's start from. Uh, uh, from verse 16, Exodus 19, 16. So it happened on the third day, when it was morning, that there were thunders and flashes of lightning, and a thick cloud was on the mountain, and a very loud blast was sounded on a, on a ram horn, so that all the people who were in the camp trembled. You know, they were sitting, sleeping, we said, okay. They didn't tell them that they're going to be witness or witnesses of something that went on the mountain. They just told them, don't come near the mountain, close to the mountain, don't even touch it. Not even the animals. Who want to preach to the animals? Try to understand. God himself told the animals not to do it. And so it. In the morning, early in the morning, maybe some people they say sleeping, they just heard the noise. The mountain was shaking, yes, they continued. The cloud was there, the sound of a trumpet, everything was just, uh, it was a tumor, it was just, uh, 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 how can I say, something, a uh, uh, terrifying thing, uh, spectacle we were looking at. Then Moses brought the people out of the camp to meet God. And they stood and presented themselves at the foot of the mountain. Mount Sinai was wrapped in smoke because the Lord descended upon it in fire. Its smoke ascended like the smoke of a furnace, and the whole mountain quaked gallantly. Even the mountain was not able to stand the presence of the Lord. And it happened as the blast of the ram's horn grew louder and louder, Moses spoke and God answered him with a voice, with a, uh, with a thunder. That is what Israel, when God spoke to them, they witnessed those things and they were trembling. That is why when you go to uh, uh, Chapter 20, <clears throat> Wait, um, uh, 
um, want to find my, my let me take it in French because it's my diary. Okay, verse 18. From verse 18, chapter 20. Now all the people witnesses the thunder and the flashing flashes of lightning and the sound of a trumpet and the smoking mountain. And as they looked, the people were afraid and they trembled and moved backwards. It is the comments. And stood at a safe distance. You know, they even moved away. God just told them, come close, but don't touch the mountain. But it was so terrible, even the Bible says Moses himself was troubling. And now, then they said to Moses, you speak to us and we will listen. But do not let God speak to us or we will die. The same thing applied to us today. If God speaks, we may die. So God listened to the prayer of the people. And God said that he was going to speak to them through Moses or through a prophet. And that is so important to understand that when we are listening to the word of God, we are listening to God himself speaking to us. Amen. That is why, let's go back to Hebrews 12. Go to Hebrews 12. Verse 18. Now Israel come to a physical mountain. They heard the sound of the trumpets. They saw the flashes of lightning. They heard all those things that every mountain was shaking. And this, the whole mountain was covered in fire. And the smoke was just ascending to heaven. God was on the mountain. The one who abide in an uh, uh, immortal light. The one who you cannot see, cannot touch, was there. And he starts speaking to God. You remember all those ways uh, amazed when Moses came down with, from the mountain with the uh, with, with, with law on the uh, uh, table, uh, table stones. And when he, he came with it, he told to Joshua, this is the table. And the, 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 the writings, it is the hand of God. The writing of God. Moses was so immense, said, God wrote it himself. <laughs> that is what God did. And he said, now, we, now, the Christian of today, for you have not come, as did the Israelite in the wilderness, to a mountain that can be touched and be uh, to a blaze, blazing fire, and to bloom and darkness and a wedding windstorm. And to the blast of a trumpet and the sound of words, such that those who heard it begged that nothing more be said to them. For they could not bear the command if even a wild animal touches the mountain, it will be stoned to death. In fact, so terrifying was the sight that Moses said, I am filled with fear and trembling. Can you understand? Even Moses himself, he said, you are just trembling. This is what them, the witnesses, the witness in the time, and they say that it is the same thing for us. But who can tell me that when he came to God, he heard the sound of a trumpet? No. Because it was said, but Jesus Christ on the game, he will not raise up his voice on the street. He will not do those kind of things. But it was God speaking through the tongue, to the, the through that fire. And it was God speaking through Jesus Christ. It was the same God. No way. And then they are saying that, that uh, we, in verse, uh, verse 22, 
But we have come to Mount Zion and to the city of the living God, the heavenly Jerusalem, and to myriads of angels in festive glory, and to the general assembly and assembly of the firstborn who are registered in heaven, and to God who is judge of all, and to the spirit of the righteous who have been made perfect, and to Jesus, the mediator of a new covenant, okay, uniting God and man, and to the sprinkled blood, which speaks of mercy, a better and a nobler and more gracious message than the blood of Abel, which cried out for vengeance. I'm reading with the comments of, uh, of the Bible. Now they are saying that we, the Christian, the true believers, we, are, we, did approach, we approach not through our conversion, our, uh, our, our, our um, service to the holy city of God, to the Jerusalem which is on high. We are already there. That is why we are moving to the promised land for us. To the promise which is we are going to the millennium, the city of God. It is ours. And by going there, God did exactly the same thing. That is why, <clears throat> when we did read just now in uh, 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 13 to verse 17. And verse 17 was saying that we must be sober. And we must work with faith during our time of pilgrimage. On, on. Uh, how can the pilgrimage? Yeah, yeah pilgrimage. So. In this, on this earth, there's no guarantee that, okay, me am now like this, now I can do whatever I want. No, 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 no. The people of the um, children of Israel who were in the wilderness, they thought they could start to do whatever they wanted. And what happened to them? The Bible is saying that uh, they were not obedient. As they were not obedient, God destroyed them. From the million who left Egypt, only two entered the promised land. All of them destroyed in the wilderness because they were not obedient. That is why even in Hebrews chapter 3, they said, today, today it is our today. If you hear his voice, don't harden your heart. As the one who did it in the wilderness. We are not supposed to be disobedient to God. We have to understand to fear God in everything we do. That is the message of the last days. People don't understand. There's no respect no more. People are criticizing the ministers, the, the everything. They, have, they find that they can do whatever they want. No respect for nobody. Even if I don't agree with whoever, whoever who, um, any, any, any other brother than myself. I don't have to lack respect for him. What I have to do is to ask God to reveal him what I know, which he, he doesn't know. Most of us we become judges than than uh, than uh, intercessor, the one who are praying for one another. And God didn't send us for that. Nobody is a judge. God is the only one judge, and our lawyer. Our mediator is Christ. We, we are just Christians and believers, followers, disciples of Jesus Christ to fulfill what is written in the word of God. That is why now, he said, we didn't come to a mountain which has shaken. Nobody went to that mountain. We didn't come, but we came to the holy city of God. Which is in the future, what he's saying in, in Isaiah 2 or uh, Micah 4 or whatever. He said that in the coming, in the, the, the in French, he said in um, Dallas with the tongue, in the future, as we say, that like the house of the Lord will be built up on the top of the mountains. The New Jerusalem. How the brother is saying it, it is thousands of miles wide. It is a pyramid. And all the nation will come to it. We'll be there.
there I saw the invert, uh, city of God. So which means today we have, we are standing here, we are sitting in the high holy places with God, with Jesus Christ in the in heaven. Our spirits, our names are written, kept safe in the higher place in heaven. That is why he's saying here that uh, we come, uh, uh, as I can read, read here, uh, but, uh, of the assembly of the firstborn who are registered in bracket here as citizen in heaven. The first, in the assembly of the firstborn registered, they never are written in heaven. And they cannot be wiped off. And to God, who is the judge of all, and to the spirit of the righteous, the redeemed in heaven who have been made perfect. We have been made perfect. We are which we have this promise, this assurance that we are going to make it. Because God is seeing us already as perfect in Jesus Christ. And that is something so important. To understand how this thing is so important. More we get closer to the rapture, more the true believers will practice the what is right, and more the world, so called believers, will get colder. There will be this difference, will be so, it's so so net, it, it, there won't be no mixing of those two groups. The righteous will practice more right, more right things, and the one who are uh, who are not will call me to practice, have compromising things in their lives. That is why it is important to understand that we are strangers on this earth. It is written in Hebrews chapter, chapter 11, verse 13, that the one who went before us, they recognize themselves, not the Hebrews, um, um, verse, uh, chapter 11, uh, Moses, verse 13. They say, all this died in faith, guided and sustained by it, without receiving the tangible fulfillment of God's promises. I'm reading, adding the comments, yeah? <coughs> Only having seen them and having welcomed them from a distance, and having acknowledged that they were strangers and exiled or them on the earth. The same way as them who went before, we too we are recognizing that we are just strangers. They said exiled here or pilgrims. On this earth, on our way back home, we don't have nothing here. And if you go to Hebrews, Hebrews 13, chapter four, uh, 13, chapter 14, they are saying this. For we have no lasting city, but we are seeking the city which is to come. Oh. We don't have no permanent city here. We are just passing through. Because we are looking like Abraham, the city to come. We are citizens from above. Oh. Philippians chapter 3, verse 20. And other chapters. No, we don't have to go there, Moses. We are just, we are citizens of above. Jesus said, My kingdom is not of this world. So we are different. And if you are different, we have to work and to fear the one who sent us down here. We don't want to, to do things in a way that is not pleasing the Lord. Let me. Putting something before we finish. I'm controlling the time. You know that uh, uh, when I did read last week, when I was finishing the message, we did read this uh, passage in uh, Exodus 23, where God said, I'm going to send my angel before you to take you to the, the nations you are going to destroy, seven nations. But he said, don't provoke him in your way. Because we will not forgive your mistakes, your sins. 
Now that is what he did with him. If he go to Deuteronomy 18, you know, the, 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 I want to read it for a purpose. Deuteronomy 18. I'm going to take it from verse 15 <clears throat> to verse 19. The Lord your God will raise up for you a prophet like me, Moses, from among you, from your countrymen, brothers and brethren. You shall listen to him. <clears throat> Moses was speaking to his brothers, telling them the Lord, the God, will raise according to the demand they made. If you go to uh, chapter 3, Peter is going back to it when he's explained to his brothers in the, his first preaching in Jerusalem. He's saying that the Lord your God, I'm just going back to it again, will raise up for you a prophet like me. From among you, from your countrymen, you shall listen to him. This is according to all that you ask of the Lord your God at Horeb, Mount Sinai. On the day of the assembly, saying, Let me not hear the voice of the Lord my God again, nor see this great fire anymore, so that I will not die. The Lord said to me, They have spoken well. Try to listen carefully to what the Lord is going to say here. We know those things, but sometimes we have to get the revelation of what we want to say. Uh, the Lord said to me, they have spoken well. I will raise up a prophet from among the countrymen like you. And I will put my words in his mouth. And he shall speak to them all that I command him. Now listen. It shall come about that whoever will not listen to my words, which he shall speak in my name, I myself, we require it from we require it of him. And there will be consequences to what the comments here. Brothers and sisters, sometimes we do those things slightly. God is saying, telling to Moses, okay, I do accept what they're saying. They don't want me to speak for them. It is fair enough. Moses was facing opposition all the time. Korea, the Daternal, different people were just opposing him. But now God is saying, the prophet I'm going to send, I will put my word in his mouth. If they don't listen, it is myself. I will ask themselves why they didn't listen. Not someone else, myself. Because we came to the God who is the judge of all. There's no other judge. God himself. That is, should give us the respect for all the word of God. After saying that, Jesus Christ himself, when he came, he told them the same thing to the Jews. Not mentioning that it is but he just explained it in a way. If you go to Matthew chapter 12. No, no, John chapter 12, pardon me. Pardon me. John 12. Don't say John 12. I said Matthew 12. <clears throat> John chapter 12, from verse 48. Mark it in your Bible and then compare it when you go. But you're going to compare it here. John 12, from 48. Listen to what the Bible is saying. Jesus is telling those people. Whoever rejects me and refuse, refuses to accept my teachings, which is in French is the parole, has one who judges him. 
the very word that I spoke will judge and condemn him on the last days. On the last days, sorry. If someone refuses, rejects my words, he said, uh, he said, I accept my teaching, but it's my word in, uh, in French, even here when he called me saying that. Here's one who judges him, the very word, because the word is God. The word that I spoke will judge and condemn him on the last day. For I have never spoken on my own initiative or authority, but the Father himself who sent me has given me a commandment, you see, regarding what to say and what to speak. I know that his commandment is eternal life. So the things I speak, I speak in accordance with his exact instruction, just as the Father has told me. Because, he said, I will command him to teach you. That is all I'm saying that if we, we reject the one, I think we didn't come to it yet, uh, in Hebrews chapter 12. So that if we now, we refuse to hear the one speaking from heaven. To the one who is speaking to us from heaven. But we get in it next week. It is important to understand that when John the Apostle saw Jesus Christ while he was in Patmos, he saw him standing where we heading in his uh, his uh, in his hand the seven messengers and he was working in the midst of the seven uh, uh, lampstands and they call him the son of man coming to it next week why because it is shown that Jesus Christ had got three titles son of man which is the prophet. Son of God is our savior. Son of David is a king who will sit on the throne of David in the millennium. I said I will come to it next week. When John saw him, he saw him as a son of man in the middle of the church age, which means in the Church of in the New Testament, the prophetic word is going to be preached again until the time the thing change. But as our the Son of God, He is our Savior. He went to die for us, us, the Son of God, the one God sent for to shed His own blood. So now, when we come now to this position, let's go back to Hebrews first. I'm going to stop, but we are going to come back to it. Hebrews 12. Let's go to verse 20, 25. As I said, we come back to it to take the time, but I just want to 25. So to, so to uh, see to it that you do not refuse to listen to him who is speaking to you now. For he was uh, son of Israel, did not escape when they refused to listen to him who warned them on earth, revealing God's will. How much less we, will we escape if you turn our back? On him who wants from heaven. Now you can question yourself. Say, but what does it mean? They say that when God came, he descended on the Mount of Sinai and spoke to them, warned them about his words. And the mountain, everything was shaking. But now say that. How are we, are we going to escape if you refuse to listen to one who is speaking to us from heaven? Who is in heaven? Jesus Christ, the Son of God. 
He sent his Holy Spirit to come and to teach us those things which we have to know. That is even why he said, if anybody say a blasphemy against him, there's no forgiveness. He said, he went up. He sent his angel to teach us those things. He's what the one speaking to is uh, his messengers. And you, you turn back to it. He said, the one who's going to judge you, it is the word I spoke. Spoke when? Because he's gone. Through his me true messengers. True witnesses. That is why we, true believers, when we hear, we have a respect for God. It is not according to what you understand or what you don't understand. No. But it is what you believe. And by believing God will reveal what you don't understand. We will make everything smooth. That is why I said, make every path smooth. So the one which is lame may be threatened by God. God is going to put it straight. So that he won't make mistake no more. But what happened? Because you are going to receive the unshaken kingdom. So we have to receive those things with fear. The one speaks. I was going to read, but we won't have a time. Let me it will be with just a little quotation here from Christ and his church in prophecy by Brother Frank. Okay, uh, and by 17, from the beginning he's saying, uh, almost all the different religious voices in the world today, and almost all the different religious voices in the world today, there is also the true voice of God. We have a lot of voices, religious voices, but they're also the true voice of God. The days have come in which we must hear a voice that sounds like a trumpet. We have to receive the original spoken word if you are the true seed of God. The voice which sounded like a trumpet, you know the same voice sounding like a trumpet, when Elijah heard it in the, in the cave, uh, it was a still small voice. The same voice. The time has come for you to, for us to hear the same voice which sounds like a trumpet. Uh, there was one, oh no, no, I'm going to jump this. The fact that Jesus Christ is shown forth as the Son of Man in prophecy points out that his prophetic ministry continues on throughout the entire span of the New Testament era. <clears throat> Did you understand it? This is a revelation we go with it next, uh, next week. As Jesus Christ is pointed there as the Son of Man, which means his prophetic ministry continues on through all the entire span of the New Testament era. It is where we are today. And you understand what God said in, in, uh, in, uh, in Deuteronomy 18.15. said, you must, you shall listen to him. It is what he can in a different way. We know it in Matthew chapter 17 verse 5. When Peter start now uh, uh, with agitation, say, okay, let's make two tabernacles. One for Moses, one for Elijah, one for Jesus. God came down saying, this is, let's just read it. So we we'll put everything together to get deeper in the revelation. Verse 5. While he was still speaking, Peter, behold, a bright cloud overshadowed them, and a voice from the cloud said, this is my beloved son with whom I'm well pleased and delighted. 
Listen to him. Do you understand? It is exactly what he said in the tournament, but spotted in another way. Listen to him. It is him who got everything you have to know. How you have to work. How you have to live. How you can be healed. It is him. He knows everything. The same things apply to us today. This is my beloved son. And if we don't listen to him, it is me who is going to, to judge you in the day because you didn't listen to him. God said, I will not send another judge, but by myself. So he said, listen to him. Practice what he's saying. And we find and create the, the peace and the rest for your soul. And that's how we said in the beginning, we are getting to the last days, and you are in the last days. If you are not really connected with what God is doing, we will be, we will be going to drag all slowly away of the, of the truth. You will be taken away slowly to the truth, and before you understand, we will be far away. We have to fight to remain in the, uh, in the atmosphere of the gospel, true gospel. To stand heavy receiving this peace because, you know, he said, we are seeing uh, la, la, last week the, the children of Israel in the wilderness. They had the pillar of fire. They had the atonement. They had the prophets. They had the message of the hour. They were in their way to the promised land. Everything was perfect. They had a manna. They had a spit and walk. Everything they get it. But truth and belief, they didn't wish to go. It is something terrible to understand. They had everything. They had everything which could make them successful until the end. But still, they missed the goal. Brothers and sisters, it is not because we have a message, we have a prophet, we have this, no, no, more and lot of people in our midst will miss the goal. Because of what? Because of unbelief. The faith is a substance of things hoped for. And the demonstration of the evidence of the things, of the unseen things, of the things you don't see. If you don't have faith, you well, this is one. He said, if you don't have yourself, you are not a Christian. How many people in our midst get with faith? Because without faith, you cannot please God. So which means you are not, uh, you are not a, um, a candidate to the rapture. Can you understand how our destiny is at stake? There's a problem in front of us. A lot of people are thinking they're going to rapture because they are believing. What is believing the message? It is becoming yourself a message. You are a message by yourself. This is believing the message. And believing God, it is having this super sense. You can just put your hand on it and say, uh, whatever you ask to God. What do you do? You believe in God in such a way, it's a different way. How has someone, a human, can just stand here and say, Sun, stop where you are. Moon, stop where you are. And those things obey. He didn't fast for it. He didn't go in a, a prayer for, I don't know, for, for 40 days or No, he just needed it for Sun, stop. Moon, stop. And they stop for 24 hours. Can you imagine people of the day? We're looking, but let's say it is me, if I didn't have a watch on time, I don't think so. It was 12 o'clock, but the watch is still broke on 12 o'clock. 24 hours before the watch could start moving again. And this is because a man just spoke. Elijah, he went there on his knees praying, and the, the rain just came. He said, 
I'm seeing there's a small cloud in the sky. Said it's rain. Quickly, tell the king to go down quickly because otherwise the rain is going to catch him. There's something we don't have. I'm standing God. I said, Lord, I don't have His faith. I want His perfect faith. I said, I told Him, Lord, how can I be a preacher of a full gospel? I don't have it. Because the full gospel includes the, 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 the prayer for the sick, is a putting all those things. It is not in time to preach here. And we are supposed to preach the full gospel. Without faith, how can you do it? Said it is not an imagination, it is a reality. May God help us. We continue. I think we still have a lot of things to say about. This respect to God. May God help us to live according to the call we receive from God, not from men. We are going to pray. Our wonderful Savior, Father, this is the hard moment, Lord, knowing that the depart for the Homeland, it is just near us. The hour has come, Lord, that as Jesus Christ was saying, that you glorify your Son. And I think the moment has come, Lord, for you to glorify your church. The true church of Jesus Christ. When it will take its flight and go to meet the bridegroom in heaven. Lord, we understand it, Lord, and uh, tonight I'm just praying for each one of us. You said we send your angel to show us the way, to take us, to lead us through all the nations and then till we get back home. We don't want to be disobedient to you while we are journeying from this land to, Lord, to the promised land for us. Until you reach the golden strand, as the hymns are saying, where God is waiting for us at the gate. Lord, I'm leaving in your hand all the brothers and sisters, not only from this church, but even for the church, sister churches, wherever they are. I'm always begging you, Lord, to give us the same understanding according to your will. The same love, the same long-suffering, Lord, the same attitude, Lord, respect. The same, we have to work upon the one another, not to be judging one another, not to criticize one another, but to be able to accept each one of us according to the gift of love you gave us. Bless us, Lord. Give you one meeting, your church. Thank you, Lord, for helping me to understand things that I didn't understand yesterday. And to live, Lord, a peaceful and Christian life until the day you call me back home. Lord, that is our prayer. Thank you for being with us today, for tonight, and helping me, Lord, through this new way of preaching in this foreign language. But I know, bit by bit, Lord, things will be smooth. And uh, the preaching will be given the way I want them to be given. We leave our lives in your hand, Lord, and beg you to stay with us. As the brothers on the way, in my way, they beg you to abide with them, because it was the setting time the sun we did go down and uh, you accepted Lord and you went with them in the house and you broke the bread and gave it uh, praises to the Lord blessed it and that is how they recognize who you were so Lord accept to abide with us Lord and come and break the bread of life again for us let us recognize that we are standing in the presence of the Almighty this is our prayer, Lord. We commit everything in your hand as we have praised the wonderful name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. 
Amen. Let's sing one hymn before we can bow and depart the meeting in the air. The meeting in the air. <coughs> Ninety-four. Yeah. Thank you. Ninety-four. There's going to be a meeting in the air. You have heard an of little. You have heard of little Moses in the bush. You have heard of Phineas, David, and his
God bless you all. Amen. Hope that we meet again on especially on the, the uh, main appointment in the sky. God in peace. God bless you until tomorrow for the prayer meeting. Okay. Say goodbye to our brothers and sisters online until Sunday, God willing for you. Bye.